Welcome everyone. Um, in this chat, I'm going to be chatting to John Rainford, who I'd like to welcome, um, about how to figure out what's, which job is the right one for us. This is a question I'm commonly asked, um, and John and I were discussing this the other day and just felt that some of the things of his story might be really useful for other people to hear when figuring out what they might do. Um, so I'm Christine Smith. I'm the employability advisor for one of the employability advisors for the University of Bedfordshire. John, do you want to just tell us who you are and what you do? Yep. So I'm John Rainford. I work for the University of Bedfordshire as a digital learning development officer. I'm also a lecturer at the Open University. Um, and you'll realise when I, as I go to talk on that those jobs that I'm doing now probably don't relate to the early parts of my career, but they do in a way. OK, well, I guess I leads us to the to the beginning point. You know, um, what did you did you know what you wanted to do when you started university and what did you study? So that's a great question. Um, I thought I did. <laughs> and I say this kind of in, in the widest sense of the way. So my degree, it, my first degree was in multimedia design. Um, and I knew I kind of was very creative. I wanted to do something creative. Um, and I knew I was good at photography and kind of doing some graphic design stuff, which is how I ended up on that degree. Mm. Um, now, in theory, that sounds a brilliant route to go down <clears throat> and what I wanted to go. But I spent most of my kind of school career and with my parents in the background telling me to get a real job. Um, I'm sure yeah. a phrase that's familiar to lots of you. Yeah. So the theory of wanting to do something creative, but the reality of needing a job that paid well to kind of meet all those other kind of criteria in my life meant that kind of my perception of what I thought I was going to do as a career was probably very different to what I ended up going into as my first job, yeah. um, which was working in a kind of marketing and design role for a big international IT company. Um, uh -huh. And don't get me wrong, it was a great job. I enjoyed it. It was lovely. Um, but I felt there was something lacking in it. Um, there was something that wasn't quite right. Obviously, I did want to go into something quite creative and that job just wasn't it didn't tickle the boxes for me. Yeah. Um, an opportunity kind of came up to move into the live events industry. So to work okay. in marketing still, um, but to work for a, it was a small production company that was going to make live shows a bit like mix of circus and ice dancing. Sounds amazing. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, you know, the company I went to work for was a small startup. There was a recession. It went bust. Okay. Um, so, you know, that kind of led me to pivot quite heavily because a lot of those marketing and design jobs disappeared in the recession as they always yes. do in these sorts of things. Creative jobs are the first ones to go, um, because everyone thinks they can be a graphic designer because everyone can use a computer, you know? Mm. Um, so this ended up putting me into a stopgap education job. I was working as a teaching assistant in a school. Mm -hmm. which actually then showed me what I really wanted to do, which was to work in education, which oh, I've been now doing for 11 years. Mm. Yeah. OK. And and I guess from that point of view, um, just having a go at different things and just trying stuff out makes a lot of difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, often we suggest to students that they get experience while they're at university, try lots of things out. And while I'm sure you would say, you know, it's important absolutely to get your degree. It's also important to have a go at different things, either at university or after. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think had I have tried more things at university, I might have started with a better idea of what I wanted out of a job okay. rather than because I'd, so, I'd focus so narrowly on my course at university. Mm. The options open to me were I'm going to be a designer because that's what the course had focused on rather than if I'd have done some extracurricular activity, maybe work as a student ambassador or, you know, doing some outreach in a school, for example, I might have understood that I really did enjoy the teaching part of things, but there was never mm. that opportunity when I was at university. No. Okay. And the other thing I guess that occurs to me is that you talked about how you, I mean, you had some great jobs by the sounds of it, but, um, we also need to work within the reality of what the job market is doing at the time, don't we? You know, the yeah. reality of what jobs are out there. Absolutely. So this is one of the things that, that really shaped my career and took me away probably from design first than I thought I would do at university was a lot of the really good jobs in advertising design. The areas I wanted to be in were in London. 
Mm. Now, I lived outside of London. I couldn't afford to commute into London every day, especially on a kind of entry level salary. Mm. Um, And I wasn't in a financial position to move to London. So Mm. the jobs that were available to me in that industry were quite limited. Um, Also, back when I graduated, and I think things are a bit different now, a lot of jobs were reliant on you doing unpaid internships for a long period of time. And to work in London for no salary and have to commute from Milton Keynes, it just it was about unsurmountable barrier to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's not till we start to get out and actually really look at those kinds of things that we begin to see all the nuances and which opportunities are where and, and, and actually sometimes where they're not, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think one of the advantages that our graduates have now, um, because I don't want to be all doom and gloom, especially if students are kind of in the design area, is there's a lot more ways to make your work visible online that didn't exist Mm. in 2004 when I graduated. So actually, you've got a lot of ways to reach employers and clients that we just didn't have when I graduated from university. So I think it's probably a bit more hopeful for some of them um, that do Mm. want to go down that route. But I think, you know, some of these jobs still are very London centric and if you haven't got the ability to move there or don't want to move there, it does kind of constrain you in design specific jobs. But that doesn't mean you can't do what I did, for example, and go work in marketing or design for a company in a completely different industry. True. Yes. Yes. So what helped you figure out what you actually do now in that sense? Um, so I think what we said before, trying lots of things out, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a lot of, what helped me work out what I want to do now has been chance being forced into situations. So being made redundant, having to go and work in a school showed me I love teaching. Um, and that was complete, complete chance. Mm. But actually when I look back on it now, the parts of the IT job I did that I really enjoyed were going and training sales teams on how to sell products, how to market our products. Mm. So actually that teaching and training wasn't a new skill that I'd never had before. I just hadn't realized it was something that was really important to me. Mm. Um, I think the other thing that really helped me figure out what I wanted to do was finding out what I didn't like doing. Um, Mm. So parts of jobs that I'd done before that I just found really tedious or boring made me realize I probably don't want to do a job that makes me do a lot of that for many years. Um, My first job on paper sounded brilliant. So I did lots of European travel. Um, I went to all sorts of places like Copenhagen, Oslo, um, all over Germany, France, but all of those trips were about 24 hours long. So I'd get the first flight out of Luton on a Monday morning and I'd fly back on the last flight on a Monday night. So I'd never actually have any time to see those cities. So it felt great that I was doing all this European travel, but actually what I liked about travel was being able to see different countries. And I never Mm. actually got to see another country because I went from my office in Milton Keynes to an office in Oslo and on a plane in between, you know. Mm. So I I think, you know, that what a job looks like on paper and what it's like in reality is a really important thing that sometimes you have to experience to realise it's not what you want to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can't actually experience at least talking to people, Mm. finding people who are in those jobs, you know, all that kind of um, researching of who am I, what jobs are out there is really, really important, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the other thing that makes me reflect upon is actually how my approach to interviews has changed over the years. Okay. So when I was first looking for a job, I'd see a job interviewers, you know, me ticking the boxes so they might offer me a job. Uh-huh. Now I probably see them more as a two way dialogue to see if the job's right for me as well. Yeah. Um, so I'd be much more inclined to ask questions if it's a job with lots of travel. What does that travel entail? You know, where might I be going? How often is it going to be? Because that's really important to know. And I think had I've asked those questions in that first job and they'd have told me it was where you fly out first thing in the morning, the last thing at night. I might have thought differently about that job before I took oh, it. Oh, yes. Yeah, good point. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, again, you know, a- approaching things quite differently in terms of what's going to work for me, isn't mm. it? Um, so I, what occurs to me is when you graduated, because we start with, did you know what you wanted to do when you started, when you were at university? When you were at university, did you know the job you're in now existed? So not at all. Um, (laughs) Obviously, you know, I talked about two jobs. I work as a lecturer and I work as a learning development officer. Mm. Um, I knew people taught in universities. I knew I had lecturers that taught me, but I had no clue about how many roles went on behind the scenes. Um, And I think this is like any industry, really, that there's so many different jobs involved in industry. It's not just the one that you become familiar with. Mm. So if we think about live events, 
in particular, which I worked in for a while, I knew performers worked in live events, but I didn't realize there was huge finance teams in events companies. There was marketing mm. teams. There was, you know, sales teams, all these different jobs you could have in any different industry. Mm. And I think knowing that as well now would have been easier for me to think, well, what are my hobbies that I'm interested in? What's the, the job that I want to do and how might those two match together? Mm. Um, so I've got friends, for example, who work in, you know, finance for um, theatres because they want to work in the theatre right. industry, but they're an accountant, for example. Um, so I think knowing those things can really help you find something that's your passion, but also meets the skills that you want to do, because not everyone can be a performer on the stage. Not sure. everyone's going to be a designer, but mm. you might be able to work in a design firm in a slightly different role than that main role you thought you were going to do to start with. Mm, yes and we've got lots of resources that can help people to figure out what their skills and abilities are um you know you figured it out as you were as you were going along but we would really encourage students to um, book an appointment with us come along and chat to us and have a guidance interview you know you can chat to us as many times as you find it useful um I'm really glad you were able to just share with us your story thank you ever so much John that was really really helpful Thanks. Bye.